Okay, so we're going to have a look at the bonding between uh, the carbon atoms of an alkane and an alkene, <coughs> and then we're going to use an explanation of that bonding to explain the differences in reactivity between alkanes and alkenes. The first thing we need to remember is that all carbon atoms have to have four bonds. So whether it's around single bonds or double bonds, the double bond will count as two. Okay, all carbon atoms have to have um, single bonds. Four single, four bonds, sorry. So if we look at um, the bond formation, first of all, in uh, ethane, and we're going to compare that to the bond formation in ethene. Now, primarily, we're going to talk about the bonds between the carbons and how they form, and then use that as an explanation for the differences in reactivities between the two. So, we'll have a look at this diagram that I have here. Okay, and if we look at the bond formation here, this is a, our hydrogens. Okay, and if we were to look at ethene, we would have another hydrogen there. Okay, and if we looked at that, we have two orbitals in this proximity here between the two carbons, two atomic orbitals. Those two atomic orbitals are, as far as we are concerned, S orbitals. And those two S orbitals, if the attraction is strong enough, they will approach each other. And if it's strong enough, they will eventually overlap. And you will have your two S orbital electrons in this area here. And we now have a bond. And that bond is referred to as a sigma bond. Okay, shorthand, you might see written as so. And if you look at this sigma bond, it is a single bond. There's one pair of electrons in there. And that is the type of bond that you will have between the two carbons in an alkane. Okay, not just ethane, but obviously any alkane. Now, those electrons are S orbitals, as we said. And if you remember, if you were looking at the energy, you would remember that S orbitals are at a lower energy level to p orbitals so they sit closer to the nucleus so what we get in this sigma bond are two electrons which are pretty close to the nucleus so they're held very very strongly you also get this head-on overlap which gives you a very efficient overlap of the atomic orbitals to make this molecular orbital and in other words you get a very very strong bond now that is the bond therefore that holds carbons to each other in alkanes so that's a very strong sigma bond caused by, and note the terms I'm using, head-on overlap of our S orbitals. Now, and that is the bond that also forms when two carbons and alkenes join together. So the bonds within an alkene here, okay, you have two different types of bonds. One of them is formed in the way that we've just spoken about and will be a sigma bond. And despite the fact that we just draw them as two straight lines and they look identical, the other bond is actually different and is referred to as a pi bond. Okay, and we'll look now at how this pi bond forms in alkenes between the two carbons and what implications that has for the chemical reactivity of alkenes. So if we go back to here. So in alkenes then we have this further unpaired electron if you think about it if we look at the first stage of formation of the sigma bond in an alkene okay there is no hydrogen here in an alkene so we have one two three electrons of this carbon used in that bonding configuration the same is true for the other carbon one two three so they have each one electron left over somewhere unbonded and that electron is residing here in these dumbbell shaped p orbitals and if you remember compared to s orbitals p orbitals sit further away from the nucleus and are held less strongly by the protons within the nucleus therefore when these overlap as they will do okay sort of like like that we get this region of high electron density here 
which is now referred to as the pi bond. So my sigma bond forms first between the two carbons, and my pi bond forms a little bit further away because it's formed by, and note again the terms that I'm using, it's formed by sideways overlap of P orbitals. Okay. Now, that means that the electrons in this region are further away from the nucleus than the electrons in this region, which means they're held a little bit less strongly. So if, therefore, I have, let's say, a nucleophile, or sorry, an electrophile, so an electrophile is something which is attracted to areas of electron density, so a typical one for AS chemistry would be that, and I have it over here as well. So which of these two regions between the carbons would attract our electrophile more strongly and therefore allow it to be more reactive? Well hopefully you, you realise that it's this region here which is an area of high, higher electron density than this region here. We have four electrons in here because it's a double bond compared to two electrons here. So if I have an electrophile which is delta positive, it will be attracted to this region more strongly than it would be attracted to this region, making the alkene a little bit more reactive than the alkene. Okay. The other thing that is going on in here that prevents alkene, sorry, from being reactive is the sigma bond we spoke about earlier, the head-on overlap of the of the S. So that's head-on overlap of S orbitals, that's a really strong and efficient overlap of orbitals, therefore that bond is very, very strong. Okay. The other thing so that you have to remember is that the sigma bonds that are in here, the sigma electrons that are in this single bond, would also repel these electrons in the pi bond, making it again a little bit easier to break. So what does that mean then in terms of implications for the reactivity of alkanes versus alkenes? Well, hopefully we would all know through GCSE that alkenes are very unreacted. So if I added bromine or bromine water to them, there would be no reaction. If, however, I added bromine to an alkene, it will decolorize it and I will get the following product. Now what you will notice is that one of the bonds in the double bond is broken and the other one is left intact and hopefully you're able to work out that the one that is left intact is the sigma bond and the one that is broken is the pi bond. Okay, So the bromine can attack this weaker pi bond in the high dense negatively charged region between the two carbons and form your what we call addition product okay through the mechanism and I'm sure you'll all look at the mechanism videos of electrophilic because the bromine is acting as electrophile and accepting a pair of electrons and it is of course electrophilic addition because the bromine is being added across the double bond to the molecule. So in conclusion guys you would explain the bond formation here between the two carbons and between the, and the alkane as head-on overlap of S orbitals. Here I'll give you a sigma bond. In the alkene you talk about head-on overlap of S orbitals giving you first of all the sigma bond and then sideways overlap of the P orbitals giving you this pi bond which is an area of electron density above or below the plane of the sigma bond. You then explain the reactivity of alkanes as being very unreactive because you have a very strong sigma bond here which is not an area or is an area of low dense negative charge doesn't attract electrophiles whereas here you've got that weaker pi bond and an area of high dense negative charge which will indeed attract electrophiles and that allows the pi bond to break and you get these electrophilic addition reactions typical of all keys.
Okay, hopefully that's of some use to you and clears up um, that uh, bond formation within alkanes and the relative reactivities of alkanes versus alkenes.